Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Leonard, and as the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, I'm honored to be your keynote speaker today at the launch of the African Women on Board's Safety in the Workplace. I begin with a big shout out and hearty congratulations to all AWB members, to the dignitaries present there, and to AWB's Nigerian, U.S., and international partners. I'd like to wish everyone a belated Happy Thanksgiving. As you may be aware, yesterday was that American holiday. And the work of the people involved in the Safety in the Workplace project is among the reasons we all have occasion to give thanks this year. Thank you for letting me be a part of marking November 25, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and the first day of the UN-led campaign known as 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. Much has improved for women in these last three decades, but as we saw with the Me Too movement in the past few years in the U.S. and elsewhere, much more remains to be done. We in the U.S. mission have focused special attention on bringing more women into the private sector, especially into small businesses and startup companies. Forty percent of Nigerian women run their own businesses. The inclusion of women develops and diversifies Nigeria's economy and provides badly needed jobs and opportunities. To quote one of my favorite songs from the musical Hamilton, women simply need to be in the room where it happens. The room where it happens. <laughs> I have noticed far too many times that men or even women themselves sometimes feel the need to justify the inclusion of women on the basis of value they may well add to an endeavor at hand. And while I actually think that in most instances they will add value, I also want to remind us all that posing the debate in those terms is entirely beside the point. Adding value is not the basis for women's inclusion. They should not be, have to be required to make something better than it was before they got there as a precondition for entry. They just have the same right to exist in this world and in those rooms as men do. And while they are in those rooms where they belong, they equally have a right to safety. That is why AWB's three-year project on safety in the workplace is both timely and important, because it is in fact female voices that need to be heard to create a safe and secure environment to allow women to prosper. Your focus on leveraging existing legal and private sector frameworks can serve to reshape work environments for thousands of women. Even in the legal sector, which I understand is your first industry of focus, highly educated women face obstacles such as sexual and other forms of harassment. We know from recent International Bar Association findings that even there, even in courtrooms and other legal offices established to defend human rights and law and order, one out of three women legal professionals get abused or harassed at some point in their careers. We believe that every woman and every student should feel safe traveling between home and her workplace or between home and her educational institution. She should feel equally safe, respected, and protected when she is alone and not going anywhere. In turn, men and boys, fathers and brothers need to appreciate what zero tolerance means and why positive social change, as well as positive mindsets, must be introduced and nurtured early, at the micro level at home, at places of worship, and in school. Now, I'd like to share some concrete examples of what the United States government has been doing to promote women in Nigeria. We recognize the importance of starting early, when girls are still in school, to help build their self-confidence and resilience so they can later effectively compete for jobs and set the boundaries they need to thrive. Our efforts have centered on mentoring and building the capacity of women and girls so they can succeed. Our Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, or AWE, provides those mentors and the know-how to build and expand a business. These young women are giving back to others, lifting our newest program entrants with their inspirational stories and their advice on overcoming obstacles. We cannot be prouder of these educated, self-confident, tenacious, and resilient women. In traditional male-dominated sectors like energy, water, infrastructure, and information technology, USAID supports programs that address inequality in the workforce and inflexible hiring practices. In Emo State, for example, USAID partners with the State Water and Sewerage Corporation to increase gender balance across the company and reduce se sexual harassment. The project is opening new doors for women to enter Emo's water sector, where the Emo Water Board has hired an unprecedented number of women into high-level technical positions in laboratories and water quality control. 
it raised the number of women to 41 percent, making their voices appropriately part of the workplace backdrop as opposed to an anomaly. Leveling the playing field for women encourages women employees to stay in the organization, reduces staff turnover, and drives productivity, attributes that together can only build better organizations with an enhanced resilience to crises and economic shocks. In Borno State, USAID supports women-friendly centers that support women struggling for gender equality and protection from gender-based violence. The new Damboa Listening Center gives women and girls access to counseling on protection issues while acquiring vocational skills. Overall, USAID has assisted 46,000 women and girls in the Northeast, many of them in the rural agricultural sector. Despite the steep odds in Nigeria, I think we are progressing and we are on track on several fronts because of local, regional, and, and international efforts. Well-focused, conscientious individuals and groups like yours, in partnership with local governments, the private sector, and civil society, can remove obstacles. More and more, women's rights and concerns receive coverage in national news, on the internet, and on radio and television, and then get included in the scripts and dialogues of Nigerian movies. We've seen vigorous social media messaging through Me Too, Time Up, Time Now for Changes Now, Not One More, Break the Culture of Silence, Take Me Off Mute. Combined, they have helped galvanize online communities and stimulate positive action. I can assure you that the United States will continue to engage and invest in creating an environment where women can succeed. We have the same goals and objectives as each of you, to offer hope and opportunity and safety to women and girls of all ages and backgrounds in Nigeria. Thank you again for inviting me today to speak to this tremendously motivated and talented audience, and good luck with your program.